our talker today has been a GTK, he's a GTK developer. He's spent his last year supporting GTK to, um, to OpenGL. And he's to, today he's gonna talk about, have you ever developed for a GPU? Please welcome Benjamin Ott. Okay. So I'm mostly gonna, gonna ramble all this talk, which means if you have a question, feel free to interrupt me at any time, which also means if we have a second microphone back, wait for the microphone to arrive because then the video picks up the questions. Um, so yeah, this is the, the famous demo that all GTK developers have seen by now, which is a very simple thing where we just create a GTK image um, and try to create as many as possible while keeping this thing at as close to 60 frames. I think we allow it to, to skip one frame every few, few frames, so 55 is probably okay. And you can see we currently do 1,712 icons with the GL renderer. Now I can close this app and force it to use GSK renderer equals Cairo. Maximize it. Wait for a while and see what the number is there. And that is basically what I've been doing for since we started GTK4. When we started GTK4, Emanuele came up and said, well, we want to do this GL stuff and I have written, I have written this GSK thing, which stands for GTK's Theme Graph Kit which is essentially clutter without all the clutter. Um, and he merged it and then we made it so that you could render with GSK because we made the decision we want to render everything with the GSK and get the awesomeness that is amazing rendering on the GPU. And when we started it the first time, if we were lucky, we got 15 icons. And if you were unlucky, you got one because that's the minimum. And then you had to watch the frame rate go down to 15 or something. So one icon being animated at 15 frames per second was not what we expected OpenGL to be. Especially because as you can see, the Cairo renderer still does almost 500. I think back then the Cairo renderer only did 170, but that was still more than one every few seconds or so. So this one goes to, to 470. And then there's of course the Vulcan one. I hope that doesn't crash. because the Vulcan one is always this thing where we do the experimental stuff and that we don't really care about that much because the GL one is the default. So whenever you start a GTK4 application and things don't work, you go to fixing it. Yes. I think it will start dropping now, but as you can see, the Vulcan thing is a tiny bit faster than the GL thing. It needs to settle now, so it's exaggerating way too much. Um, so, so this initial, this initial port, obviously with with one or two uh, frames was not with one or two icons was not what we wanted and not what we expected. That's when we, we looked around for all the GNOME developers with experience in OpenGL that could explain what's going on and knew about that stuff. And it turns out that was a very 
small number, essentially zero. So we started learning about it, reading up about it, and or rather I started, and then I started pushing everybody else to learn about what was going on. And this talk is roughly what I've been telling all the GTK developers that I've been talking about. 2,900, yeah, that's roughly what I would have expected. It's not quite twice as much. The good news is I have no idea why Wilkin is twice as fast as GL. I have some suspicions, but I haven't debugged it. What I usually do is I run sysprof, like you can, you can now press this little lock up here, which will lock the number of icons, and then you can run sysprof in the background, and sysprof will give you a nice profile of what is actually going on there. Um, so yeah, what, what did I learn? The, the first thing I did learn is that a GPU is not just a different CPU. It's not a CPU with awesome commands to do rendering fast, but a GPU is actually a different computer that you send your data to and then it processes it and sends the result to the screen. So it's, a cent it's more like running on a remote X server than it is like anything else. Which means you need to think about drawing like you were drawing to a remote X server. It just turns out that a GPU is a really, really fast remote X server. Um, and that, of course, means you need to avoid round trips, you need to reduce the amount of data you send, you need to cache things on the remote server as much as possible to avoid retransmissions. And, of course, we're doing none of that because in GTK3, nobody did that. And then we worked on making that happen. The other thing that we learned is that a GPU is a really, 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 really fast uh, remote X server and can do things in basically no time at all that a CPU would completely bog down. Like if you want to, to make this, maybe I can even do that. If you want to make this blur, hoo -hoo, there is Vulcan brokenness. Image. Image, filter, blur, 3px. Now all these things are blurred. All the images, the text isn't blurred. Of course, I can see if I click this thing now. Now I clicked it. So let's see. It's now only at five frames per second, so there is a difference, but that's because we do the extra step of telling it to blur. Now it's going to drop icons like crazy, but let's see where it ends up. Um, of course, if you would be doing this on Cairo, you would now be close to the one icon thing again, because you would need to have the CPU compute the blur for every pixel, which is a really complicated operation, and because it's implemented that way, you would do that every frame. And the GPU doesn't really care that much, it just blurs it, because we are not a game like Doom or some Unreal Engine masterpiece that does 500 things on the GPU every frame, which you can really do. Like, we have never hit the limit of what the GPU can do. It's actually slower than I thought it would be. And it's also buggier than I thought it would be. But it's roughly as fast as Cairo was when we started up. So, 
and it's blurring all the icons every frame. Um, so, so the thing is you need to submit stuff without reading anything back. You need to, um, you need to use shaders for everything. Like you want to do all the computations on the GPU as much as possible. Um, so even if you want to draw like 2,000 icons, if you compute the coordinates of every icon by hand and then send them to the GPU, that already takes a lot of time. It's better to just store the coordinates somewhere in the memory area that you can just shove to the GPU and then it will pick the one it needs, compute everything it needs from it and go from there. So where were we? 170 lines. Pretty good. Now the question is, why is it only 170? It could be, probably be a thousand. Probably GTK is doing something stupid. Um, the way we did that, that whole step was introducing the render nodes and the retained drawing, which I don't know if you were at my, my talk, GTK talk two days ago, I showed a bit what render nodes are, which is essentially a list of commands that you need to execute to draw this thing. So in this case, it is saying, well, after it says, draw the whole background, it would now say, now draw this image blurred, and then draw that image blurred, and then it's a list of 200 images and draw them blurred. And this list of commands is, we created, we keep it around, and then when the renderer comes, the renderer can take this list of commands and process it into a list of GPU commands and send it to the GPU without reading anything back, without doing anything, which is how it, how it gets its performance because Cairo, for example, draws one thing, then returns back to you, then draws the next thing, then returns back to you, which is very complicated in a GPU kind of world where you want to draw everything at once. That reminds me. We have this benchmark in GTK3. I wonder how fast it is there. We only, uh, okay. I could try to figure out in tweak tool where I need to set the font size. But oh look, somebody added a too big icon to the icon cache. Well, it's, it's always, or always nice if we demo that because the QT icon is already so big. So everybody just sees QT icons being animated whenever we show a benchmark. It's probably, yeah. No idea where those icons come from. It just takes random icons from the icon theme. Um, So, so we now do all this work where we translate it or we, where we create these render nodes. And that has opened lots of interesting possibilities that we have because we now retain the end render nodes between frames because all we need to change here are the coordinates. We can just keep everything else around. Like the whole image is still the same and if there was a CSS, a border around it, we could keep that and we just need to say this whole image, please draw it three pixels to the left from where you drew it last time. And then the renderers can go and become creative about what they cache on the GPU. We are not doing lots of that yet. We cache the, 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 the images on the GPU but not much more. We could become very creative so there's still room to go up. Um, but this, this is using GTK3 and Cairo. So apparently GTK3 on Cairo is faster than GTK4 on Cairo. 
well, that is to be expected because GTK3 is doing, no, GTK4 is doing what GTK, the GTK4 Cairo renderer is doing what the GTK3 Cairo renderer is doing, just that it goes in through the intermediate step of creating all the render nodes first. So there is no optimization or anything. It's the bare bones be as simple as possible renderer that we can use to check if everything is working and not some sophisticated Cairo rendering mechanism. Well, we just saw that it was getting around 500 frames on GTK4. So currently it's half as fast, but nobody ever looked at optimizing it. It might be doing something entirely way too stupid. So there is probably, if you wanted to write a fast Cairo renderer, like the Cairo renderer is literally 50 lines of code because um, it's our fallback mechanism. So all we do is tell it, do a fallback for the root render node of the window and then it goes through it and does everything fallback. But you could try to optimize it, cache stuff in surfaces and get creative. Like I think the biggest difference in this case is that we don't even upload the images to Xlib surfaces or whatever it is. Which in this case I think we do. So if you changed that and made an image cache in the Cairo renderer, you would probably almost get to where you were before. But as I said, nobody looked at it. It's also a question we haven't yet answered if do we need to look at it? How fast is a GNOME user's uh, GPU? Because I know there is some people that run very old stuff. Um, who haven't who who haven't used or who have who haven't got a GL renderer and they have in their bash RC or some way GSK renderer equals Cairo when they're hacking on GTK4. So open question for now it's the simple one we use for debugging because if we want to make sure our rendering is wrong, we do a screenshot here and a screenshot of our GL or Vulkan renderers and compare the two to figure out what's going on. So, so with that said, if anybody is an OpenGL expert and wants to join in, we would be more than happy, especially if it turns out you're not an OpenGL expert but a DirectX expert because then you can write a renderer for Windows. Um, and you can of course play around with these these demos because the demo also has this thing here where you can try to draw buttons or shadows or fonts or this one is fun. Lots of lots of level bars, text, spinner, spin buttons, switches, and then you can try to click them. So and then the way to do it is to, to use these applications, run sysprof, figure out what's going on, what is rendered there because this thing doesn't just render images, it renders text and rounded rectangles and blue and whatever. So I need to finish up so now, so I'll leave it at that. Um, thanks for coming.